Every time it rains, you notice more people are carrying umbrellas. Does rain cause people to carry umbrellas? Or do umbrellas somehow summon the rain? Welcome to the world of correlation and causation, where not everything is as it seems. Hi, I'm Matthew Courtney, and here we talk all about education research and data. So if you're into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel and come be a part of our community. At some point in your education career, a professor has probably said to you, correlation does not equal causation. After what I'm sure was a convoluted and prolonged explanation, you were probably left wondering, what does that even mean? Well, let me break it down for you. Correlation suggests a relationship between two variables. When one changes, the other tends to change in a specific direction, either positively or negatively. Causation takes it a step further. It implies that a change in one variable is responsible for a change in another. Now, when we talk about correlations, they can either be positive, negative, or absent. Let's briefly review each category. First, positive correlation. As one variable increases, the other also increases. Think of height and shoe size. Tall people usually have bigger feet than short people. Height and shoe size are positively correlated. Negative correlation. As one variable increases, the other decreases, like exercise and weight. As you exercise more, typically weight goes down. Exercise and weight are negatively correlated. No correlation. Two variables move completely independently of each other. Consider the number of chairs in a room and the stock market. They aren't related. No matter how many chairs I add to my dining room, my 401k will continue to be unaffected. I'll add one more type of correlation here, and that's sort of an unofficial category, the spurious correlation. This is when two things are correlated, but there's definitely no relation. For example, did you know that civil engineering degrees and mozzarella cheese consumption are positively correlated at a rate of 95.9%? Even though these two variables are positively correlated, there is certainly no relation. Shout out to Tyler Givens and his book Spurious Correlations for that example. Let's consider a classroom-based scenario. Over the course of a school year, a teacher notices that as student attendance and after-school activities goes up, their grades also approve. There's a positive correlation. Your immediate reaction might be participation in after-school activities causes better grades. But wait just a second. Is after-school participation the only factor influencing those grades? Could it be that more motivated students both attend more after-school activities and study harder? Or maybe there's a new educational app that everyone's using that we haven't accounted for. Here, while after-school activities correlates with grades, it does not necessarily cause the improvement. There might be lurking variables in the background. As evidence-based decision makers, we must always be vigilant to ensure that we are not jumping to convenient conclusions based on correlations alone. In the broader world, misconceptions about correlations abound. Think of the infamous example that ice cream sales and shark attacks are both positively correlated. As ice cream sales rise, so do shark attacks. Does that mean that indulging in ice cream provokes sharks? <laughs> Absolutely not, that's ridiculous. The lurking variable here is the season, it's summertime. People buy more ice cream when it's hot. They also swim more in the ocean, increasing the risk for potential shark encounters. It's totally coincidental. Understanding the distinction between correlation and causation is a foundational element of evidence-based decision-making. Misinterpreting data can lead to false conclusions and misguided actions. It's vital that we scrutinize data, consider potential lurking variables, and use controlled experiments when seeking causation. While correlation doesn't imply causation, it can be a valuable starting point. Many scientific discoveries began with observed correlations that, when tested rigorously, revealed causal relationships. So don't ignore them when you see them. Just think a little harder. If you found value in this video today, make sure to like and subscribe and check out some of the other videos in this playlist. I'll see you next time.